Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we have an absolutely epic mission. We have picked all of these missions up here from Mission Control. So we need to build an orbital station around Gilly. And this has got a few requirements, one of which is to have a thousand units of ore in our fuel tanks and five Kerbals. We need to do the same sort of thing around Minmus with the exclusion of the ore. Um, we've got this Explore Gilly mission here, which is just a spacewalk. Uh, we also have here a mammoth liquid fuel engine test there over Gilly, uh, just at the altitude 30 to 40 uh, kilometers there. And of course, we also have a build orbital station around Eve, uh, another pretty epic one, of course. Um, similar requirements, again, five Kerbals, and also to plant the flag on Eve. Now, this is the big one. This is the difficult one, obviously. So yes, with all of this queued up, let's launch into our vehicle assembly building and check out the massive vessel I've made to accomplish all of this stuff in just the one mission, which is all edited right down in this one episode. So you'll see we have spots for three Kerbals in the top of this vessel in those nerve rocket motor stages. Underneath though, we have a crew capacity for two in the Mark II lander can there. Remember, we need to only have capacity for five Kerbals, not actually take five Kerbals with us. Now you'll see here that I have an asparagus staging sort of setup here, but we also have a little trick because we don't want to actually use that asparagus staging setup until we're on Eve. We can just decouple this little gizmo, which will actually stop fuel flowing back out into the side tanks and actually make it act again like it's in asparagus staging mode. So we can actually run this in two ways. We have Burberry, our pilot, Asterisk, our engineer, and Bob, our scientist. So let's head to the launch pad and light this candle. Now, because Eve has a much higher gravity than Kerbin, we need a very high thrust to weight. That is why this is actually probably very overkill looking for Kerbin. The difference, of course, is we need to get this entire thing to Minmus in the one stage. We need all of this to go, with the exception of these SRBs, which we have just got just to give us a little extra oomph. So everything else here needs to get all the way to Minmus. That's why we have these massive liquid fuel tanks on the sides there. These won't get all the way to orbit by themselves, though. We're going to give the mammoths and the vectors another burst here. So all of the liquid fuel is now gone from those central core stages. It's just a liquid fuel here we are using to circularize our orbit. So there we go there. We'll set up that Minmus transfer here in a second. This is actually the most difficult part of the journey to actually do this. You need to be very efficient and there's only just enough liquid fuel to get to Minmus and land before this thing is entirely empty. Because of that needed efficiency to get there, just with the amount of Delta V we have, we are going to do this in two passes. And after close to 500 meters per second Delta V spent here, we are now on our transfer to Minmus. We can watch Kerbin just fall away from us there. And after a very quick adjustment there, a mid-course correction, we can continue our journey. And as we come into Minmus, we can then turn retrograde, of course, and start our burn there to circularize. As we pass our orbital velocity there and drop into a Minmus orbit, you'll notice that we actually already have achieved uh, that very first mission, which we'll cover in a second. So as we come down to land here, you can see just how tight this is uh, to get this vessel all the way to Minmus with the fuel we have on board. Uh, actually had a few attempts at this, needed to actually add some more liquid fuel tanks on the side and touch down there. We can now time warp so that we've got some better light. We don't want to leave you in the dark watching all this, so we can take a quick look now at that mission. We have achieved our orbital station mission there. That alone is worth $200,000 there almost. So let's fill this thing back up. We'll drop out the drills, radiators, solar panels, and get that Convertitron unit under the fairing there, working away like crazy. Now, because I didn't pack a massive heap of batteries, I did need to actually restart this a few times over a few days. So I won't show all that, just uh, rest assured, I did fully fuel it again. So we'll bring all of our mining gear back in and launch this thing. We are now off to Gilly. 
after first escaping the sphere of influence of Minmus, which doesn't take much Delta V at all, uh, we can now set up a very big plunge down into Kerbin's gravity well to take advantage of the Oberth effect and, uh, and just make our transfer out to EVE even more efficient than if we were to go straight from Minmus. Now, if you are unsure about the Oberth effect or why you should use it, and how it even works. Uh, check out this video I did quite a long time back uh, right here. So a burn here of around 230 meters per second will get us on our trajectory to EVE. After this, we did need to also do an inclination adjustment just to make sure that we come into EVE just around the equatorial plane there somewhere. Didn't need to be too accurate there because we're actually heading for Gilly. So as we come in, we'll do a adjustment here, just a little fine tune and uh, this is going to get us on the same inclination as Gilly. Now the journey from Minmus to Gilly doesn't take that much Delta V, so we were able to be inefficient and just burn our main vector engines and our mammoth engines here. Gilly, of course, being the smallest little body in the entire Kerbal system, so we can land on that with no trouble. So we have already completed our contract here for building an orbital station around EVE. That's another 359,000 reward just for this one mission. Just a few very small burns to do here to complete our encounter with Gilly. Doing a return mission to EVE would be much more difficult if Gilly wasn't here because of course we need to refuel again. And there we go there, our encounter is set up. We'll now time warp around to our encounter with this beautiful little space potato as so many uh, Kerbal Space Program players like to call it. So a very small burn here just to drop ourselves down into a suborbital trajectory down onto Gilly. And we just happen to be at the exact altitude to run our mammoth liquid fuel engine test here. So we are going to just run this test here. And there we go. We have completed our mission there. 303,000 in funds for that one as well. Now, stupid of me, really, I should have done the Explore Gilly mission there first, which uh, means I now need to turn around and get back up into it and orbit quickly. Uh, and of course, because this is Gilly, this is only a few meters per second, so no big deal. What we can do here is put our camera inside the fairing. We can now transfer uh, Bob Kerman out into the Mark II lander can. And all we have to do here is pop Bob out on an EVA, and that's going to complete our next mission. So there we go there, we have another 67,000 reward. Now, if you include the contract advances we've already received, we have now earned over 1.2 million in funds, so more than enough to easily pay for our entire stupid vessel at this point. The cost of which actually, if you picked it up from the start of this episode, was just shy of 1 million in funds, so certainly not a cheap vessel by any measure. And touchdown here on Gilly. Now, after a little trial and error trying to get this thing stable, we've just stuck the drills in and we'll mine this space potato so that we can do the next leg of our journey to land on EVE. So we'll kick off this refueling here, fill our tanks right up. And actually, uh, this part of our journey, we needed to, uh, to actually drill uh, 1,000 units of ore. And this is simply so that we can actually achieve this next mission where we build the orbital station around Gilly. So we'll just do that little tiny bit more drilling there, fill up those ore tanks. And of course we must not forget to do our exploration, our science gathering. So Bob's going to come out here, grab our samples, all that sort of thing that we may not have already picked up last time we came to Gilly. I'm not going to dwell too much on how to collect science and all that sort of thing because you've seen us do all of this before. Uh, there's a lot to cover in this episode, so I don't want to spend too much time showing you how to uh, read science instruments, which is quite boring. So off we launch to an orbit of Gilly, which only takes a bit of a puff there from our engines. <laughs> It really is a tiny little body. I mean, you can do a mission to Gilly and jump on all of the biomes of Gilly much easier than you can if you were going to, say, Duna or Ike or whatever. Another tiny burst there to climb into an orbit of Gilly, and we just need to wait. And there we go there. We have completed our next contract, another 554,000 in funds. 
We'll just do a quick burst of our engines to leave Gilly's sphere of influence. We don't even need to leave in the correct direction because the Gilly just has no gravitational influence at all. We really just want to drop into an orbit here of EVE. And of course from here we are using our nerve rocket motors to drop our periapsis right down uh, as close as we can there to the surface of EVE. Down we come. Now the idea here is to use all of our liquid fuel. We want to burn our nerve rocket motors to reduce our velocity as much as we can. We won't be needing these anymore after we actually ditch them here shortly. We also don't need the ore tanks that are stacked on top of those nerve rocket motor stages either. These are now going to decay down into an EVE orbit and burn up harmlessly, leaving our space here free of debris. And down we come now into our EVE atmosphere. We're going to fold in those solar panels and we're going to now do a completely powered entry down into EVE. Now this is something you wouldn't normally do, obviously. Normally you would be using a whole heap of heat shielding. And really it's just a bit different, isn't it? Doing a, a powered descent down into EVE instead of using heat shielding. Everybody uses heat shielding. That's the easy way. Just burning around 700 meters per second here to circularize our orbit right down. We want to land on the bright side of the planet. And now we need to reduce our velocity from over 3000 meters per second down to an entry speed which will not explode all of our equipment. Now the atmosphere will slow us down as we're entering as well so we don't need to reduce all of this velocity with our engines but we do need to take out a good chunk of it over 2000 meters per second really. As soon as we hit the thicker part of the atmosphere, there is absolutely no problem slowing this down. No matter what your vessel, the atmosphere is so darn thick. With our parachutes out, we are just falling extremely slowly. And there we go there. Touchdown. Uh, wobbling around like a crazy thing. Worst landing ever. <laughs> we'll just drop those ladders out after the nausea subsides. And we'll go through our refueling process again. We did land in a spot that didn't have a great amount of ore, so it took a while to actually refuel this. Luckily, we do have Astras on board, so she speeds up the refueling process by a huge amount. If you noticed at the start of the episode, Astras here is a five-star engineer, so she gives us a huge benefit when doing a lot of mining. So there we go there, we are all fueled and ready for liftoff. Now, uh, if you're wondering where the ore tanks were, they're hidden up there underneath the fairing. So we will transfer Burberry Kerman this time into the Mark II lander can, uh, and he can climb these ladders, the very, very long climb, down to do the honours of planting a flag. Out you come, Burberry, as the entire vessel behind you slowly slides down the hill and <laughs> plant the flag there. Awesome. It is just a little concerning that vessels just seem to slide around like that. That, uh, that is definitely a traction problem with the game engine, I think. Uh, squad may need to work a little on that. Anyway, uh, contract complete. We have completed that mission 666,000 in funds there for that part of our mission. Again, pick up all of that wonderful science from the surface. We'll grab the surface sample and the crew report there and head back up the ladder. Burberry, of course, needed to train for six months just to be able to achieve this massive feat. The gravity on EVE, of course, having a much higher gravity at 1.7 Gs, which is 0.7 G more than a normal G for this Kerbal. He must be very careful too, because if he falls off this ladder at this height, he will die. <laughs> the actual uh, impact at the uh, at the ground level by the time you fall from that height is lethal. We'll just pick up a bunch of science instrument scans here. We can actually pop the camera there through the fairing and pick them all up. With the exception, actually, of the atmospheric scan. You can't use that one whilst it's stowed, which is a real bummer. So there we go, all of our missions are complete. We are ready for takeoff. What we first need to do, however, is actually drop this little segment here off. This is going to switch our tanks back into asparagus staging mode. We also must remember to transfer Burberry back up into our uh, upper crew cabins, otherwise he will, well, he'll die really because this whole thing is coming off. Lift off here now. We are going to be accelerating straight up. We do not want to stay in the atmosphere one second longer than necessary. This atmosphere is absolutely brutal. 
We've already dropped that first set of tanks. The second tanks are going to expire after we reach around 400 meters per second, and we're still in the thickest part of the atmosphere at this point. We're going to raise that apoapsis up to 100 kilometers, and then we're going to cut these engines. That ascent profile, of course, looks pretty rubbish, but you really do need to get out of EVE's atmosphere very, very quickly. There go the fairings, and we can now decouple this stage, leaving us just with our very, very efficient nerve rocket motor stages. So we are leaving the purple planet now. It is considered by some, of course, to be an almost sister planet to Kerbin. Well, despite the purple, and the toxic atmosphere, and the extreme pressures and temperatures. Actually, it's not very similar at all, is it? Who are these people? And if you didn't pick it up, that is the in-game description for EVE. I do like these game descriptions, they're quite cool. So the only thing we need now to do is return to Kerbin. Now, uh, up until this stage here, uh, those two side boosters have basically given us all the Delta V we needed to leave, uh, leave the purple planet. We still do have plenty of Delta V in that single central remaining tank, so we're going to just lug these back and burn them up in Kerbin's atmosphere. Just a very quick correction here, just to bring our periapsis right down there along the equatorial plane of Kerbin. We didn't need to be too efficient with our transfer back to Kerbin, and you can see there uh, I probably didn't pick the very best transfer window. But we are going to be aero braking entirely here as we approach in, and we still have plenty of Delta V in this uh, single nerve rocket motor tank. Ditching our side tanks there, and we're going to wipe off as much velocity as we can with this nerve rocket motor, because we are coming in at over 4,000 meters per second. That is damn quick. Losing a bunch of parts here, the satellite dish and our RCS jets there, which we actually didn't need. We'll just fire up these two twitch engines to help reduce our velocity even faster. We are going here for the most brutal re-entry we can. You've got to keep life exciting for these Kerbals, I think. Just entering the thickest part of the atmosphere now. We've slowed right down. Out come the parachutes. And then what we're going to do is give our engines a tiny little burst just as we're touching down Soyuz style. And yes, touchdown, mission complete. That is it for this mission. We are going to recover this vessel. We've brought back with us 544 more useless science points. And we've been awarded with a crap load more milestones that we didn't have before, so fantastic. Before we go though, today we have two flags to drop here for those very, very smart people who found the hidden message in the thumbnails from the previous two episodes. So very nice work guys, I did try to make those ones particularly difficult, obviously I'm going to have to try harder. Very best of luck to whoever finds the hidden message in this week's thumbnail. Thank you for watching and making it all the way to the end of this slightly longer episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do take a second and give it a thumbs up. All of your support helps a huge, huge amount. Uh, if you have any questions for me, of course, please do whack them down in the comments below. Thanks very much to all of my awesome subscribers for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we will see you in the next video. Just showing some of those beautiful shots of our aero braking maneuver as we pass through this very, very gorgeous moon here. Of course, remembering to extend and contract our solar panels for each orbit so that we don't uh, either A, run out of solar power or burn our solar panels up on one of these.